Oh my goodness, we've been sitting there talking the whole time. We've been muted. Ah, oh thank you. So we'll start over. We're like, da, 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 da. thank you. That's hilarious. Uh, we were just apologizing for yes, yesterday and the confusion <laughs> of the, we had this, we were leading a humanitarian trip last week. It was amazing. Cool stories we'll share from today. Um, but our calendars got mixed up. So Guatemala does not change the US time. US changed time zones, but Guatemala did not change time zones. So we used to be on central time, but now Guatemala is on mountain time. But our calendar, Google calendar doesn't register that. And so well, our assistant did, but she's she has to convert it anyway. She thought we were still on central, central not mountain. So, anyways, total confusion there. We're back, we're hitting it, <laughs> we're having a great time. Good stuff here. Um, love it. You guys ready? Even though the lighting is not the best, Lighting's, we're remodeling rem remodeling the place. So, all these amazing things, right? We're in Guatemala, we're having epic adventures. Uh, we've been traveling now, so it's April 1st, you guys. Since we've been traveling since. since after Christmas, yeah. yeah, and it's amazing. We're having epic adventures and memories of our kids and cool experiences from this little rustic cabin that we're remodeling and living in tents. Cottage. While we was I'm getting calling it a cottage. A cottage. Oh, cottage. Ooh, I like it. A little cottage in the mountains. Um, and you know, before this, we were on the beach in a huge house. Uh, we rented on the beach in Mexico, right? And having the contrast from all those beautiful experiences and. Oh, it's awesome. So I got a lot on my mind today. Remember, this is the, the extraordinary family life formula coaching. There's a formula to all this goodness. And there's, there's habits and patterns. There's things we're doing that make all the difference in our life. And if we're, if we get caught in these patterns that don't serve us, then we stay stuck, right? One of those, this is just on my mind. We're going to hit some stuff here, but I, I just had to throw this one out there. Are you having fun? <laughs> Are you having fun? I got to I gotta ask that question. Are you having fun? And I want you all to ask this, whether you're here live, whether you're watching training, whatever. Are you having fun? And what just, just, and you can chime if you want to jot that in the chat box or whatever, like, I want to know for reals, do you and evaluate, do, give a self evaluation right now? I'll do it. You can do it. It's like, are you having fun? Are you consistently having fun and enjoying your life? It is easy, unbelievably easy to get in the grind and put your head down and work, work, work. And then you become like the man with the muck rake. It's an old, old tradition this guy raking the muck, the garbage, and he never looks up. And so all he ever sees is the muck. And it's easy to get caught in that and see all these wonderful, fun things in life. We could be whistling zippity doodah and skipping through life, but we're like, well, well there's stuff and things. And I'm just in work mode and I'm in parent mode and I'm in take care and fix problem mode. And you stop having fun well i think that's what's interesting and that i was going to chime in on is this is the very fascinating thing about life and even like pursuing and living your dreams because you have this idea of i want to do this thing i want to achieve this goal i want to you know do this project which is what we're doing right now like we've had this vision of remodeling this place we have right now we bought this place seven years ago we lived in it for six months, I think. Mm -hmm. And then we continued traveling. We went to, you know, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. We went to Europe for a couple of years. We went to the States. Now we're back. We've had this dream of remodeling this place for a long time. And this is true with a lot of things. But once you have this dream of doing something, but once you actually get into the actual doing of it, it's not like dreamy. Honestly, it's not like, and that's true with like, we had a dream of having a family. We had a dream of even traveling. Traveling's not all like dreamy all the time. A lot of times it's very um, irritating. Uh, undreamy. And uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Inconvenient. So we end up, and I know that I, I definitely struggle with this where I'm like, I have this goal. I have this vision. I have this dream. But when I get right in the moment of doing it, I'm kind of like, oh, 
I'm not having fun. I'm like just doing it and I'm being allowing myself to be irritated. I've been allowing myself to be irritated by Guatemala. <laughs> just gonna admit that right now that, you know, the challenges of trying to get like right now, our, our bathroom sink is sitting right here at the foot of our bed and the, the bathroom sink in there stinks and it needs to be replaced. But we keep waiting for that to happen. And now it's Semana Santa. So nobody's working till Monday. <laughs> Right? It's all these little things. And yes, I forget to have fun and remember that this was my dream. I wanted to come and remodel our place and do this shopping spree of buying stuff for it and all this. And that it should be fun because this was my dream. And I love, and the same, like you mentioned, is true with parenting. Yeah. When you get married, you dream about having a house full of kids yeah. and raising these kids to so grow up. It's going to be cute. amazing. We're going to have a blast. And then when you're living your dream, you're in the, you're in that stage that you dreamt about. And you're like, and you're like oh. Wazowski. <laughs> the grind. <laughs> it's so. And the grumpiness. Mm -hmm. And you feel perpetually angry and everything else right and it's just frustrating so let's talk about that man are, are you um it's so true sometimes mom sounds like a curse word yeah exactly <laughs> right we're gonna punish you to have children and have to take care of them they're 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 knocking here on our makeshift oh, door sure. interrupting oh, our no meetings door. right one more food it's just part of life and so i i'm being so sincere so if, if you're here with us or you're watching the recording, I want you to take an honest evaluation right now. Are you consistently having fun? And I really liked what Nathan put in the comment box here. He said, I do some things every day that I enjoy. I'm not sure that any of them would be considered fun. They aren't jovial. I think that's great. Um, I was one of my coaching clients recently, we were talking and I said, is it obvious to your children that you are happy and enjoying life and enjoying life and she was like oh she's like i regularly it really similar to what nathan's saying i regularly do things that i enjoy and i feel contented but even in those and she said it's it's momentary it's not all the time it's just moments but even in those moments i don't manifest it i don't show it right so she's having these moments of happiness but doesn't even show them outwardly it doesn't make it obvious right so think about that let that sink in for a minute you feel occasional happiness but you don't make it obvious so and this was my question what then do your children think about you mm -hmm. what then is your children's impression if you rarely have fun and you rarely make your happiness obvious your kids will grow up thinking hmm, hmm. mom wasn't very happy <laughs> makes me want to have kids <laughs> yeah dad dad and was always stressed and grumpy oh no he didn't have fun very much he didn't play very much he wasn't he wasn't enjoying life and then it's going to fit into today you're training your children Ooh. Well, and so Emily in the comments here says, wow, that's so much my personality. And I can totally relate with that because that's actually kind of my personality. That's something I have had to work on because I'm, I'm an introvert. I like my personal quiet time. I enjoy life, but it's not, it's not like, I'm not like Greg Denning here. Okay. I'm not like yelling, making noises. You know, all of this, I'm very, I, my personality is just more quiet and subdued. And so I've had to be more conscious about like showing my emotions or at least, um, voicing my emotions or, or being more emotive in general, like saying things like, this is great. I, you know, I'm so excited about this. I'm happy. I don't have to necessarily be bouncing off the walls per se. But I think it is critical that we learn how to let our kids know what we're feeling so that they know we actually enjoy life, right? We actually do enjoy being a mom. We do enjoy 
being alive. Being alive, exactly. You do enjoy, uh, uh, and again, so I love what Rich said, you have to be emotive, more emotive, meaning you show your emotions. Well, most of us show emotions, right? Right, but it's usually- <laughs> But it's not the ones, emotions. it's not the ones we want our kids to be manifesting. We want our kids, we want them to be happy and peaceful and mm -hmm. jovial and, and contented and fun. And, and yet we and don't present. show those things. And we show frustration and anger and irritation. stress and irritation and, and anxiety and fear and all that, right? We show those things and we, those are obvious. We make the, the little ones obvious and the important ones silent. Mm -hmm. So we have to be more emotive and we have to be more um, articulate. Yeah. We've got to articulate the good positive feelings. If it's happening, you don't have to be like put on a circuit, a circus show, right? Like, but it's just like, oh, I love this. I love this. I feel so good. I feel so fantastic. So grateful. Expressing your gratitude all the time and and your good emotions. Like make it obvious that you're having fun and that you're happy. Now you know, Rachel made a comment like, oh, I'm not like Greg Denning. Well, I'm not either. Right. <laughs> um, and, and I purposely chose this. I wasn't this way, my friends. I was timid and shy and reclusive, uh, often frustrated and irritated, had a raging temper. Holy guacamole. I had a scary temper. But along the path, I met great people that are modeling it for me. And I saw some obvious examples and I just chose, I was like, I wait, wait a minute. Well, here's the hard part. I thought personality was just kind of set. You just have the kind of personality you have. I didn't realize you could choose your personality. You could shape your which personality. Is, which is partially true, but it is more malleable than we think. Yeah, we, we have a chance to alter iterate, improve, refine our personalities and our emotions and behaviors, our actions, everything. And I, and I learned that I learned it from watching people. And so I just, I became conscious of it. I became aware of it. And I actually made a list of like, what are the, what are the attributes I want to have? I want to, I want to smile. I want to engage with people. I want to say hi a lot. I want to greet people. Because you, you go through the world, and this is this is pretty worldwide. Some some cultures are better than others, but pretty worldwide. You go through a place, and if they don't know you, they don't greet you. They just kind of look over, okay, and they keep going. And and I I made a habit now of greeting people and smiling and and waving, laughing, being jovial and setting an example. And I've done it so much, you guys, that now without saying anything, my kids do it. And so we were hiking a volcano over the weekend, epic <laughs> awesomeness, um, steep grind of a volcano. We were sore. We were sweating. Our shoes were full of volcanic sand and ash and rocks and gravel. We, um, because of training, we have conditioned ourselves to be able to help others when they need some help. So I had the opportunity to carry three backpacks and my and sons. you guys, well, you're, yeah, the sons were carrying backpacks and they made it up. Usually it takes people five hours. They made it up in three hours. Just over, we did like three, fast. three and a half hours or so. And we're grinding and we're hitting it. We're going hard. We're sweating. We're burning. And I was greeting everybody. Hey, buenos dias. Buenos dias. Hey, que tal? Como esta? And I was just greeting them. And, and, and I noticed, I started watching my boys were doing the same thing. And they were sweating and they were grinding. They were having a hard time going up. Everybody coming down, they're like, hey, buenos dias, buenos dias, hola, buenos dias, que tal? And they were, they were joyfully, cheerfully greeting others while under a serious burden, literally. <laughs> it's, it's what you choose. So my friends. Yeah, that's, that's cool. good. Ben, ben Hardy. Hardy. Yep published a book recently personality isn't permanent that's there's a lot of cool research behind I would that like super to read awesome that book. yeah super Sounds cool awesome. stuff so you get to shape who you want so again we started today's uh kind of meeting with the question are you having fun are you celebrating are you enjoying your life so let's um let's uh okay there's another one there's a book i, I like nathan wrote this in there the wisdom of the enneagram it talks about the roots of personality how we can use personality cast 
uh, as a cast to help us heal from wounds. Mm -hmm. If we're doing it well, our cast will become thinner and more flexible, right? The malleability, mm -hmm. I love that. And our personality will become less a part of us and we will become more whole. I love that. Yes. So seeking to be whole, love that. to be complete, to be our best selves. Mm -hmm. So let's all do this right now. Let's just make it concrete. And so instead of just, just the philosophy of it, right? We're, we build our lives on principles and philosophy. And I think that philosophy is, I think all of us, this, there's, there's a few things I'm comfortable saying, hey, across the board, all human beings should do this. One of them is have fun, man. Have fun. I'm okay saying that. I think all humans should have some fun, right? I'm, I'm totally comfortable with that statement. Have some fun, people. Enjoy your life. Be happy and make it obvious. If you're taking notes, please write that down. Make a note for yourself. Make it obvious. Make it obvious that you're genuinely having fun. You are genuinely enjoying your life and yet you're genuinely happy. So that people and around you don't have to question... Yeah. Hmm, I wonder if they're happy. I wonder if mom enjoys being a mom. I've wondered that. And I've tried to be more intentional about showing that I do enjoy being a mom. Because going back to that idea before, it's easier for me to show when I'm frustrated being a mom. And when my kids test me and challenge me, it's easier for me to voice those things than it is for me to voice what I love about being a mom. And what I love about being married, having a family, you know, all of these things, even, even the work we do and the projects we do, it's, you have to be intentional about voicing those things because it doesn't necessarily come naturally. In fact, I think it rarely comes naturally. Agreed. If ever. So yeah, we have to not only have more fun, again, coming back to like, this was my personality. I, I'm not like Greg loves to, you know, do fun things all the time. My sort of fun things are very different. They're, they seem, they, they, it's to being, him, they don't it's seem It's being fun. alone in a quiet place. I know, right? <laughs> I'm having a blast or, all by myself. I know, seriously. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, but I do like things like dancing and stuff. And so I've had to be more intentional about including more of those things into my life. I even bought a dance app and I, I used it in at the beach house and I've used it again today, finally for the first time since Guatemala, but like I bought a dance app and that's my workout because I like dancing and I have fun dancing. And so I'm trying to include in my life, first of all, being more aware, like what things are fun to me. Like some people have to do this. They have to like actually to, come up with a list of like, what well, is fun? I, I did me? too. Right. You have to be like, what do I like? What do I enjoy? We go through life, just going through our to-do list, putting out fires, just thinking about all the things we have to do. And we, we never stop and be like, what, what do I like? Yeah, it's we fun. didn't put fun. What do I enjoy? Have fun. Um, so pay attention to what, what is fun to you and then intentionally include more of those things in your life. And then show it, show that you're having fun, show that you're enjoying life, show that you're happy. So I want, I want to invite you. I'm going to put Rachel on the spot here. Oh, 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 oh. Um, and tell him about your discomfort with the dancing. Cause I think this is going to be real for a lot of you. You're like, okay, I am, I'm feeling happy right now and I want to have fun but how do I show it? It feels really uncomfortable. It might feel really awkward for you just to go, woohoo, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. like you can't do that. And that's true. And back to the personality thing, because we get comfortable with being in our certain personality. Like that's what feels comfortable to us. And so it got to the point where I'm not an emotive person. I don't yell out excited about things. And so then when I was thinking about, well, I need to do that more, it felt really weird and awkward. Like, oh, this feels weird that I'm going to like be excited about something. Be expressive. And people are going to look at me like, this is out of personality for you. What's going on? <laughs> They're right? going to judge That's, me. Yeah, yeah. That was a thing for me. I'm like, I don't want to be judged even by my own kids that I'm not acting within my little personality box here. Right. Man, who can relate to that? Right. <laughs> You, you kind of set up a little reputation. And then if you're like, well, but I really want to be more expressive. I want to have more fun, but that's not who I am. And people will wonder what's going on. I've been asked consistently if I take drugs, right? 
<laughs> and I don't, by the way, <laughs> but like, I don't care. I want to make it obvious that I'm having fun. And for me, it came down to like, I just had to find my unique thing. And one, one thing that's interesting is I'm kind, I am kind of like a goofy person, honestly. Like I'm kind of, I don't know. I just think I'm kind of goofy. So I have this kind of silly sense of humor. And so I just let that come out more as my little, whatever, joking or, or silly witty comments or things like that. Like I just had to let that side of myself come out more instead of just trying to hold it back because, oh, that's not who I am or whatever. And how do the kids respond? They like it, I think. And do they ever, I mean, sometimes do they they're ever like, tease? Oh yeah, sometimes they're like, oh. The, okay, especially if you've got some, maybe some adolescents. Um, some of my coaching clients, when, I, when we talk through this, like, hey, you really got to change the culture of your family. You got to show this. My kids will just make fun of me. They'll they'll just <laughs> yeah, say I it's ridiculous. At first. And yeah, at first they're like, what? what are you doing? That is weird. Please don't do that. You're embarrassing us. And that's, man, for me, I'm like, oh, I'll lean into that comment all day long, right? <laughs> you, you want some embarrassment? Oh, I can bring it, right? I'm, I'm not going to let other people in my fear of judgment dictate. Like, if I want to be jovial and playful and outgoing, and, I, and I, I've really thought through that, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the kind of person I want to be. That's the kind of person I want to be remembered as. I'm going to lean into that, right? I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, um, even if. Yeah, they that's so embarrassing. embarrassing. Um, yeah, there, there you go. And the great comments coming in here on, on Facebook and in the in the uh, Zoom. So I have a well entrenched personality yes. box. Mm -hmm. Man, we can all relate to that, right? We get we get just kind of trenched in there. Mm -hmm. And then what are we going to do? Um, and there were some questions in here. I want to hit another question, but but lean into that, you guys, and and make it obvious. Make it fun. Now somebody asked. Um, oh, and, uh, let me hear this. Where Emily said. Mm -hmm. What my son wrote on a Mother's Day questionnaire once that his mom's favorite song <laughs> is silence. <laughs> yes. And it, it makes sense, especially for moms I know. who hear endless chatter all day. And you're like, could we just have a little bit of quiet, please? Mm -hmm. uh, which is okay. And it's okay to have some quiet. And it's okay to just have some chill time, you guys. And it's okay to just sit and be non emotive or expressive. It's okay. But I want you to invite you to have some fun and celebrate, really, really celebrate. Celebrate your successes, your wins. Celebrate some of your failures. Celebrate life. Celebrate other people. We could literally spend our lives celebrating, and I think we would be better off because of it. Now, oh, I, I just wanted to add one more thing. Like one other thing I started to do, because yeah, I, I do like science. I actually joke with myself and Greg and the kids is that I have this noise thing. Like if there's too much noise, like I'm like, okay, I need some headphones or earphones or something to like quiet it down. But what I've started to do is to be clear about that, but also balance it. And so when my kids, cause my teenagers, you know, I have four teenagers right now when they want to put on their music, instead of getting kind of bothered by it or, you know, whatever saying is too much I like I, I embrace it at that moment and I even get into it and I'll dance to it and I'll you know we have fun with it and then you know after a while if if it gets too much then I'm just like okay that's enough let's turn it off now but but I I I let them know that I enjoyed it and we we had fun with it and that it was a good thing and a good experience instead of just oh I'm gonna be bothered by it and then I'm gonna tell them to turn it off because right. then, then they might grow up thinking, well, again, what's, what's the like, message you're even... sharing? Like she can't have fun. He can't have fun. Or it's, it's not, some of our kids will pick up this thing. It's not good to have fun. Right. It's not good to dance around and play it's just because every time we turn on the music and we're loud, our, our parents got after us. Right. Okay. And so they start su the subtle imprinting of it's not good to have fun. It's, a bad thing. it's less, right. it's less refined. It's, it's less great. Right. Okay, now, cool question here. What if all you want to do is have fun and your money suffers? Great question, right? Fantastic. And um, in my experience, at least, that's pretty rare. 
Uh, it's more often that people are, they get into their tasks, they get into work, they get into their errands, they get into doing the things they have to do, raising kids, just all the things we have to do. And they don't have enough fun. But in my experience, at least working with thousands of people, most people don't have enough fun. They're not really celebrating. Now, there are those who like, yeah, hey, I just want to have fun all the time. Like party, party, party. I don't want to do well, anything. Oh yeah, it's like one end or the yeah, other. Yeah, it's one or the other. So there's this, it's a smaller group, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. It's a smaller group, I think. They just want to play, 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 and they don't want to put in the grind. So here's what I, here's my invitation. If you love fun, like I do, do work that's fun. Or have fun doing your work. See the, see the distinction there? Have fun doing your work. I, I think, this is just my experience, I think the ideal is you can be playing and working and people can't tell the difference because you're just having a blast. You got a spring in your step, you got a smile on your face. Can you be serious and can you get stuff done? Can you be productive and effective and still smile? Yes, you can. Can you be like serious at work and knocking it out and, and giggle and laugh and enjoy yourself and celebrate? Yes, you can, right? And so I love, um, I love, love, love this idea. Of, I have a song that came into my head. That one of the things that the kids listen to, it says, I'm on vacation because I love my occupation. Nice, you know? yes. That's what came into my head. But yeah, I think the point is, when we're talking about having fun, it doesn't mean no responsibility, right. blow off all of that and just go blow your money on activities, right? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about making life fun, including the grind, yep. like climbing a volcano, including the things that can be challenging, finding a way to make those things fun. Because that's actually what brings more meaning to life, more fulfillment to life. Yes. And that's a, that, man, that's a real achievement, my friends. And, and I, I actually, I'll offer this invitation to you. That's a real achievement when you can genuinely have a blast when things are dirty and messy and uncomfortable and inconvenient, not working out right. When you can play and laugh and do that. And, and we did it this weekend. We proved it. And it's like, it was awesome. Right. Um, we just, it was hard and we were uncomfortable. We had blisters and sweating and stinking and it was freezing cold and the volcano's blowing all night long, you know, two o'clock in the morning. It's like your tent shaking <laughs> and everyone jumps out the tent. And we're like at two o'clock in the morning. We're all like, well, Woo check it out. Cause because, the volcano was blowing. Yeah. The volcano was erupting the other volcano, not the one you were on. Was it? Yeah. The one it's windy us. here and it's blowing. Um, but then, then on the other side, okay. So the other comment is like, I blow my money on fly rods and tents. Okay. This guy right here <laughs> loves to spend his money on gear. gear. I love gear. I'm a but gear junkie. That's not necessarily a bad thing either. So we're not, it's not one or the other either. We're not saying blow all your money. Don't have any responsibility and just fish all the time or, or climb mountains or whatever. And we're also not saying don't do the opposite and all responsibility and all work. It, we've invested a lot of money in gear because that gives us the opportunity to go climb a volcano. And like have if you, those epic we climbed, adventures we attempted us. Cotopaxi in Ecuador in February. We did Orizaba in Mexico in January. Mm -hmm. We climbed, they did this volcano here in Guatemala. That requires gear and travel and money, money and investment, right? Okay? So then, of course, the other thing is. There's nothing wrong with doing all of that. Just make sure you're in the money to do it. Yeah. And have fun doing it. So uh, I guess across the board, enjoy your life. And if you need more money, enjoy the journey of getting more money. Like I, you're, you're going to be more successful. I, I, here's another thing I feel really comfortable saying. You're going to be more successful if you're having fun doing it. Which we're talking about tonight in our money mastermind actually is yeah, just finding the way to earn the money to create the lifestyle you want to have. So it's, first of all, having the mindset of, I want to have fun with my life. I'm going to be intentional about having fun with my life. And if that requires more money, and this comes up a lot with, with our education coaching too, because we talk a lot about having experiences and creating experiences for your children as part of their curriculum. 
And one of the hesitations, of course, is the money. But you have to be willing to make that investment in the experiences. It's great to invest in fly fishing. It's great to invest in gear. It's great to invest in all of those things because it provides experiences that help you grow, transform, learn, develop yourself. All of that is even, a really great thing. It's even great to invest in your decos and creating an environment <laughs> that makes you happy and jovial and fun and it has a peaceful place, right? So there, there's a balance to all of this and, and there's there's a, a unique- solution. I think the solution. point is there's a solution to all of it. We, we don't have to think, I can't do this thing I want to do because of money or because of I Because I have to be serious. Or because of- I have to do the work. Because because life's uncomfortable right now. Things are incon uh, in un inconvenient, and they're just you know they're not they're not working right. It, it, we just think sometimes well, I can't be happy right now because I'm I'm dealing with a challenge. May I may I gently and lovingly challenge that? Sometimes we tell ourselves stories that I can't be happy, I can't be jovial because we're facing challenges right now. We're going through a trial. Like we're doing something hard and we tell ourselves that we can't be happy and we can't have fun. And I, I want to invite you to challenge that idea and that story and lean in and just love your life. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that was so a that, great introduction. Yes, that was the introduction, but it fit perfectly what we're talking about today. Ready? So we, we're going to talk about training. I have two quotes that I say all the time that I repeat to myself that I share with others and they have become part of my personal life philosophy and our family life philosophy. And then of course, those principles show up all the time in life experiences and they showed up a lot last week and I'll share some During examples of our that. Guatemala humanitarian trip. So every year I lead a humanitarian leadership trip to Guatemala and we just did another, another one once we're down here in Guatemala. So here's quote number one. It is from um, Archilochus. He said, Greek poet, we do not rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. Whoa. We do not rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. That is so profound. I invite you to think about that for the next couple of decades. Wow. It's training. We think up here and like, oh, if I'll be up here. Well, really, no matter what happens, all of your outcomes, all of your results, everything's going to come down to your training. And it does every day. And, and here's, a, here's a crazy thing. Whether we're aware of it or not, we are doing training every single day. We're training ourselves. We're training our spouse. We're training our kids. We train other people how to treat us. We're always doing training. And ultimately, we will fall to the level of our training. And so we see this all the time in um, our family relationships, the order and cleanliness of our house, our business, our finances. I mean, anything you can think of, our marriage relationship. Okay, this quote applies to all of this. We don't rise to the level of our expectations. We might have expectations up here of like, I want my house like this and I want my kids to behave like this and, and I want our, my marriage to be like this. Our marriage is just going to be fun and everything's going to be fantastic. We won't even have to work on it. <laughs> like nothing. Or even just this idea of like, yeah, I want to have a great marriage. That's the level of our expectations. But we don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. Okay. Meaning so, the fall is when, when you stumble, when you have a failure, when things don't work out as expected, when somebody reacts differently, when um, you're tired, when you're hungry, when like you're have you're struggling, right? Mentally and emotionally, spiritually, socially, financially. When you hit a wall, that's the fall. And you fall to the level of your training. Now, if you've mm -hmm. been training at the level of your expectations, guess what? You don't fall very far. But if your training, may I be blunt here? If your training sucks, you're going to fall far. And you're going to splat and it's going to hurt. So I'm, I'm Sorry, guys. I'm going to be I'm gonna be straight because I've experienced it and I see other people experience a lot. A fall comes and it's way down there. Oh, boom. And they're like, what happened? Oh, this, all this. You're like, well, you fell to the level of your training. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a second quote by Will Durant. Will Durant said, excellence is an art one by training one w o n one by training and habituation i'll translate that you're going to you're going to be excellent in life at the things you do as a person and all your stuff you'll win that it's something that's earned it's something that's won through training and habits let that sink in excellence is an art that is won by training and habituation okay now let, I have a couple of stories for them. Okay, so do Both I. Both of these. So do I. So you, you go first. Okay. Well, actually, no, no, no. Let me, let me okay. share mine. Sorry. Because okay. this happened on the volcano. So we're climbing this volcano and our family, we train hard in, in all areas. We, we've been really intentional about this for years because we learned this a long time ago. And I don't say that to brag and I don't say that to compare. We just... We became aware of it a long time ago, so we've been working on it. And I'm, I guess, let that be evidence to you that it works. If it works for us, it'll work for anybody. Well, this is part of my story too. So okay. Hang on. So we train and we push hard, and especially my older kids. With the little kids, there's some training, but not. It's not until they choose to say, "I want in," that we're jumping off huge cliffs and just going hard. And we do Krav Maga. We exercise really hard. And so I was able to carry those extra packs. It's some, so there were some people in our group that were struggling. One of them was my younger son, who's 10. He was spent. So I carried his pack. And then I was able to carry another pack. And then my sons picked up some packs. And so, so. And Devin are. And Devin picked up a pack because he's, he's been here with us for months. He's been he training hard. He carried a child, I think. Yeah, he carried a kid off the mountain. So, so between us, we're like, oh, are you, hey, let me take your pack for a little bit. It's okay. And again, not bragging, not boasting, not making anybody feel bad, nothing. It's just like, we, it's an opportunity to serve. And so you grab them and we can, and we're, we're keeping pace and setting pace and passing people with extra packs on. And people are like, what the, it's crazy. And it, and it hit me so hard. And I want to share this principle today. Our habits put us in a position to serve or they put us in a position that we need to be served. Ooh. Let me say it another way. The level of our training will enable us to serve or make it so that we have to be served by others. Man, let that sink in. That can be physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, financial. It all comes down to training. And that's what, I mean, that's what we're diving into today. Training is everything. So to tie into the story, because this is what I was going to share, um, before we left on this trip, December 26, we left on this trip to drive through Mexico to Guatemala, and I had decided that I was going to climb two mountains with Greg, okay? Orizaba in Mexico, which I think is the highest mountain in Mexico, mm -hmm. and Cotopaxi in Ecuador, and they're both... One's 18.5 and the other is 19,000 something. So they're big mountains. Like this is a real mountain, higher than anything in the continental United States. And I was terrified and I was training for these mountains, right? I mean, I was pushing myself. I was training consistently for these mountains. But then I would look at my husband <laughs> training for these mountains and I'm like, this guy is insane. Like <laughs> He just, every single workout, he is pushing himself beyond limits. And a part of me was kind of like, this is just too much. I'm like, if this is what it requires to climb a mountain, like there's no way I'm I out. could ever do this, <laughs> right? But he said something to me that was interesting. He's like, I'm not training just to do the mountain. I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was something like, I'm training so I can help people or I don't, I don't remember what exactly it was, but it was something along those lines. I'm not just training for the mountain. I'm training so I can, I can support. Right. Well, so I've been thinking about that and I've seen that play out again and again. When he trains, he pushes and, and, and we're not saying that this is what you have to do. I'm just, it's a, it's teaching the principle. 
he pushes himself beyond what is necessary in a way. And I've seen that be used multiple times in helping people and sometimes saving lives, literally. Um, when we went to Ecuador, did you do a podcast about this yet? He didn't do a podcast about this yet, but he will soon. When we went to Ecuador, we climbed a mountain as for training for Cotopaxi and it was 16,500 feet. So it was big. I was, I was struggling, but I made it to the top. And afterwards we were, we were booking down and I was just going down. I was tired. I was just ready to, it took us four, four hours to get up. And on the way down, it took me like two hours to get down. Well, he disappears somewhere. And it turns out he'd gone back to help out some people that had fallen off the top. Like, I'm not going to tell the whole story. He will tell that story in the podcast, but it was a very traumatic experience. But um, you're going to want to hear that story, by the way. You're going to want to hear that life changing, story. epic story. So it's our, our podcast. Those of you who don't know, there's a lot of people joining us. It's the Extraordinary Family Life podcast. Go and subscribe to that because that story is coming next. But anyways. The, the point I'm making out is because of his training, okay, I was spent. We were with another couple. They were both spent. One of them was a doctor, but he was like, I can I barely get myself off this mountain. I, I know that up. someone fell. I cannot go back up to help because I won't make it. But him, because of his training, not only went to the top and you know, was helping us to the top, but then went down like a third of the way and then went all the way back up to help this, these people that had fallen. Okay. So when he talks about his training and like, it's extra when he works out every day, it's not just so he can make it up the mountain. It's so he can, if he has to, he can go I back can go up the mountain. Back up. So <laughs> essentially I summited a second time and then we had to help carry somebody off and Holy guacamole. It so, stresses you. So I just was tying that that in there. And it's this idea of, we're talking about a mountain here, right? But this applies in anything. This applies in your parenting, with your patience levels. This applies with your energy levels. This applies with your business, your finances, your marriage, everything. If you train at a level so that you can go the extra mile, right? You can do the extra, like you then become the person that people lean on. You become the one that they look to for support. And it's not in a tiring, exhausting, wearing yourself out sort of way. It's in a- I'm having fun. I'm having fun, you know that <laughs> sort of way, right? You have the energy, you have the stamina, stamina, you have the patience, you have the perspective, you have the power that you need to be the support for your kids and your spouse and your neighbors and whoever else needs you, you have it. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about training. So now some of you right now in your mind, you're like, Ah, I'm exhausted. I like I, barely... I don't have that. I'm, I'm dragging myself through the day. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? How do I have more energy to climb mountains or do cool things or have fun or celebrate? Like I, I don't have energy to celebrate. I make it to the couch if I'm lucky and I lay there the rest of the evening recovering. <laughs> it all comes down to training. Like we weren't born this way. I wasn't born this way. Yeah. It comes down to training. And, and... and as you train, you increase your capacity. Yes. Well, and we've used this analogy before often, especially in our coaching here. Okay. We've talked about the stairs and the levels. There's different levels. Now, some of us, we feel like I can barely make it through the day. I can barely get it. And you look at us talking about all this energy and blah, and you're like, that just looks so, we've had people ask us this many times. It just looks so exhausting. How do you do that? It's just so tiring and what's happening is we've reached a new floor is what we call it. we all have floors and ceilings in our lives okay you have a financial floor and a financial ceiling you'll never make less than this but you'll never make more than this either because th that's the 
the box you've created for yourself, right? We have that with energy levels. We have that with patience levels. We have that with everything in our life. We have this floor and ceiling. So what all we've done is we've changed our floor and ceiling. And instead of our floor being down here and you're looking up at us like, oh, you're just filled with energy. It's so exhausting because you're trying to jump up there <laughs> and you're like trying to stay energized, right? But you keep hitting the ceiling and falling back down and it's exhausting. We just moved our floor. Our floor is up here and we're standing up here and we're like, relaxed. This is easy for us, but it's at a different level, right? That's what we're talking about training. You fall to the level of your training. Now, if your training's down here, this is where you're going to fall, right? Down here. But if your training is up here, you fall to this level. It's easy for Greg to fall to the level of climbing a mountain twice in one day because that's his training. And it's he was exhausted when he got off, but the next day he was fine. He's like, let's go, <laughs> right? Because that's the level of his training. So if you can grasp this concept, it's super duper powerful for transforming every area of your life. If you can change the level of your floor financially, emotionally, mentally, physically through training, okay? That's going to change everything in your life. Yes. Now, the other thing, I guess I'll tie this in because someone asked us, I think it was someone on Instagram. They're like, is your family really like as well adjusted and happy as you appear to be? Right. Which is a really great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Especially on Instagram. Like, is this for real? Well, there's, or are you well, just... there's, there's so much facade. And the truth is, and I said, you know, yeah, we're not perfect and we have challenges. But overall, yeah, absolutely. We're well adjusted and we're pretty functional. We're very functional. <laughs> I know. We're, yeah. And again, this isn't boasting, it's training. And, and been that is one training. of the reasons why is that each of us in our family, me, Greg, and then we're, we've taught each of our children to work on the tr your own personal training so that you raise that level right so our you know if we have a disagreement or a or a challenge or you know someone's feelings get hurt or whatever our floor is here and so we fall to that level but we're still standing up here because of training our daughter is on right here yeah it has a great question hold on let me ask a question before that though. okay so we'll somebody asked uh, up question. earlier they're like well, okay you guys seem to have mountains as your family identity <laughs> like how do you how do you get everyone on board with that do they all go willingly and again I, I love the question and the answer is literally training we've just modeled the way i've carried kids and so in fact you just recently while we we're on this trip um we took the little ones and we went on this hike and the little ones, they, they, they wear out and they don't want to come. So most people are like, well, leave them home. Little ones can't or come. We can't, yeah, we can't, we, we can't go. We're not going to take we're them, like stay back. And, and I've always had this philosophy since we adopted our first daughter. I'm like, we take the kids. And if I have to, if, if they, when they wear out, I carry them. So I take the additional load so that the kids learn to love the mountains. And if, you know, we, we, we push them until they're tired and my legs are tired. I'm like, oh, you know what that means when you're tired? It means <laughs> you're getting stronger. Now. They all know. I've been saying this their whole life. <laughs> Our lives. little girls now, my legs are getting stronger, mom, because they're tired. They're tired. Yep. And so we, that was always our thing. You know, push your limits, push your limits. But then when it becomes unpleasant and miserable where they, they're not going to like it, then I carry them. And, and they, they love, love it. it. They love it. They love going on adventures. They love the outdoors. They love hiking, love mountains. They love all this crazy stuff. Because I, I take away the pain for a while and while they're young. And then we help them push through these all these experiences to, to until they get to a place where they actually love, they're willing to push through the pain and the discomfort for the experience. And they've watched me do that the whole way. So did they always like buy in? No, but we've modeled for them. We've created training. We've We've taught them in, in, in pleasant ways. We invite them to challenge themselves until, yes, they are all on board. They're in. But you, again, it comes back to the training. Well, and I think especially with the, the mountain we did in Orizaba, well, on the volcano, 
yeah, it's modeling for sure. You know, I did not go on the volcano because I, our little two, our two youngest actually were not feeling well. So I stayed with them. But um, on Orizaba, I think the older ones opted in because you were going, I was going. Like mom was going, this was kind of a big deal, right? And so they see that and they're like, yeah, of course we're, we're going, we're going to do this thing now. And it was a incredibly was hard. Tough. We did not make it because it was very challenging. But the point is that we tried, we pushed our limits and that's the point pushing your limits because pushing your limits, getting into now Kaya's question, you have to push your limits if you want to train. If you want to raise the level of your floor, you have to push your limits. That's the only way it's done. Because that's the reason it's there. It's a limit because it's your ceiling because you haven't pushed past it. So you have to push and push and push and push until you push past that. And then you still have to push because you fall back <laughs> until it now becomes your floor. So pushing your limits is how you create Whoa. new levels. Whoa, I love this stuff. Okay, I wanna share a little bit of a metaphor or analogy um, about swimming that this occurred to me years ago and it just clicked. I was like, yes. And I hope that for some of you, it'll click like it did for me that you'll see through this little example how we all have the power to increase our capacity and therefore literally alter the experience. Your reality. Um, the, the question here, how did you guys get uh, well, I think as that's a couple, a get to the place where you agree on pushing yourselves and your kids? It seems like Greg is the instigator. <laughs> is that true? Am I the instigator? Um, I think it depends on the topic, on the area. Yeah. As far as... I think for sure there are certain areas of our lives where Rachel's the instigator for sure. Um, they, they often, because I'm louder, they often, oh, Greg is just this <laughs> pushing. Greg's it's, just forcing Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel goes. And, and some people have said stuff like that. Oh, you guys are out traveling because of Greg. He just, does he make you go? I think I was, I was the instigator for and she, traveling. She's like, let's go. I'm like, let's go. I'm in, right? And so we trade off. Um, quick, a quick answer to your question is how do we get on board and, and push ourselves and our kids? The, the foundation for our marriage, our relationship, our lifestyle has all been built on reading. We just read great books. Reading and, and read. or audio books and or podcasts. podcasts yep. So we're just constantly consuming great input and, to, and sharing it with each other and learning. And so it's helped to be like, yeah, we, we got to do this and here's how we approach it. And here's something else we need to try. And it really helps us get on the same page because we're consuming great content. And you know, great books, uh, great podcasts, great things like that are very good at articulating the reasons behind it. We both love studying mm -hmm. the science and the research behind it. We're both just voracious learners. And that has helped us cultivate our life philosophy. And we've been super intentional about that, writing it down and repeating it to each other and to ourselves and to our kids since they were born. We've been teaching them these philosophies. DDHT. Dennings do hard things, right? We say that all the time. And so our kids our grow up, internet our, our kids grow up and think that's what we do. We do hard things. So we create the identity around it. All right. You okay, guys ready? Swimming now. So swimming now, here we go. It was actually in this country. It was in Guatemala when it like it really occurred to me. I have a great friend. Um, he is just a true man and I admire him. And every time I learn more about his life story, I'm just blown away. He's just such an incredible human being. He does not know how to swim. He's in his 50s and he never learned how to swim. And there are a lot of people in the world. As I got out traveling, right? Swimming is one of those things you kind of take for granted. You just learn to swim as a kid. You take some swimming lessons or something. You go to the pool or the ocean or the lake or the river and you learn how to swim. So I just kind of took it for granted. I just figured people learn how to swim. There's a lot of people in the world don't know how to swim. Especially in developing countries. So if you go just 10 feet from the shore in the lake here, there's a big, beautiful lake. 
if you go just 10 feet from the shore and you put my friend in the water, it is literally life-threatening. It is a horrible, horrible experience, and he may die 10 feet from shore. Now, with most of you listening to this, if we went 10 feet from shore and I pushed you in, you'd probably try to pull me in and just splash water. We'd be playing. We'd be having fun, and then you'd just swim back over. Right. So, I mean, even if it was a little bit hard. Yeah. Even if it was hard, like you you, you go, you back float over if you can't do 10 feet or something. But, like, I I want the contrast here. What is fun for one person is life threatening for another. And we'll talk about why here in a minute. But then let's take most of you and me and we go out two miles from shore. Now, how many of you are in trouble at two miles out? Right. Me. Rachel, (laughs) right? Two miles is far. So now two miles from shore, you're, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. I have friends who will go out and swim two miles as a warm up or a workout. I have friends that will swim that far because it's meditative. It's relaxing. They'll go out and they'll just swim and swim and swim. And they're like, Oh, it was so peaceful, so enjoyable. I just swam along the ocean, swam across miles. the lake, put in a couple miles. It just felt so good. So what's meditative and relaxing, enjoyable for some, life-threatening for others. What's the difference? What is it? What's the difference between my friend who can't swim and my friend who swims two miles in meditation? Well, the answer is training. It's capacity. It's learning how to do something and then practicing it and training and training and training. So it literally makes something that is so difficult, even life-threatening, it makes it easy and even fun. What? So So marriage can be easy and fun. Or life-threatening. Or it can be (laughs) life-threatening, right? Uh, Parenting can be unbelievably excruciating or it can actually be easy and fun or easier and fun. How about earning money, income? What's the difference to the guys just like money just flows in and the other one's like, I can't make an extra $10. It's training, it's capacity. And so every area of our lives becomes easier and better through training. And so daily, and we're all doing training all the time. It's the quality of our training that makes a difference. You're doing training, whether you're aware of it or not. I'm doing training. We're all doing training every single day. We're training ourselves. We're training our kids. We're conditioning, constantly conditioning. But your outcomes and the journey and the struggle are really dependent on the quality of your training. Man, this stuff is good. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, man. This stuff is so good. I love it. Um, what are you going after? Did we answer that? Okay. So the question is, what are things people should do every day to train? Phenomenal question. You'd pick, so I call it the fantastic five, right? Physical, spiritual, social, mental, emotional. Those go together. Like the things you feel are directly tied to your thoughts. So make that connection. Like if you're feeling something, it's because you're thinking something. And it might be automatic thoughts that have just kind of been going on in your subconscious for a long time. So mental, emotional, and then financial. So those are the fantastic five. Physical, spiritual, social, mental, emotional, and financial. So pick one of those areas of your life. And you can break it down to your marriage, parenting, relationships, dating, employment, work, neighbors, uh, self-care you know, holistic health, all of education, learning, all that stuff. So you pick- And one way to pick something is to often pick what's causing the most pain in your life. Yes. Yeah, look at the pain. Look at the pain points. Where are you struggling? That's a great place to start. Um, Nice, I love it. Let's see, there's a comment here. Can I just say thank you so much for this? Gives me such a new understanding of success. 
Yeah. Which book should I start with? Okay. Good so questions coming out. So, here. so training we'll is about which book. pick, pick the thing that's causing the most pain point and the thing that will, um, really make the biggest difference in your life. If, if, if earning more money would make a huge difference in your life, that's where you start. Everyone's if your health, <laughs> if your health is bad, well, some people health is the place to start because if your health is really bad, changing that is going to make a huge difference in your life. Maybe right. it's your marriage. Let me, let me drive that one home. Did, okay. Your body is the only place you get to live in life. And the condition, no, the quality of your life will in a major way be determined by the condition of your body. Jot that down. The quality of your life will be determined by the condition of your body because your body is both the filter and the limiting factor. So if you want to dance around and have fun, you need to have a body that can dance around and have fun. You want to go on adventures, you need a body to go on adventures. You want to be a phenomenal parent, you need a body that can handle the strain and crank up the energy levels. You're an energy generator, right? You're not a victim to energy. Most of us live as victims. We just don't know any better. We think, oh, I'm just so tired. It's because you haven't learned how to generate energy. You're not taking care of your body. So your body is just determining all these experiences. And if you're really struggling, very often it's just because of the condition of your body. So start there. So wherever, wherever you want to start, one of the fantastic five, just find out what works, what is phenomenal for success. And this is the stuff I cover in my podcast. This is stuff where I, I have a, a course called Be the Man Masterclass. It's a masterclass in Tribe. I, I hit all this stuff. We do training for this in the Extraordinary Family Life Formula. We, I mean, all this stuff we do, our marriage course. Well, this is we what have, we do. You have, so the question about the book. So the first thing is pick which area of your life you want to focus on, then pick a book, podcast, course, etc. that focuses on that thing. Yes. And we have a, we, you have a list. I have a phenomenal book list. So I've read well over a thousand books. So I put my best books topic. on there and it's in by topic, right? So you can just go get the book list for free on our website and, and then, then go through the books. Training comes down to what do these successful people in that area do consistently consistently to achieve those results so if it's money what a, what are people doing who make money what I'm are they doing, doing consistently to get those results what are people doing consistently to get the results of health what are they doing consistently to have a fantastic marriage what are they doing consistently to be amazing parents you pick the area then you pick a resource and you figure out what it is they're doing and you make that a part of your life you make it part of your habits now we've done that. I mean, this is one of our things since we've been married, which is, well, since before we've been married, we've been married 20 years. We've been consistently doing that in each of the areas of our life. And anytime we feel like there's an area that's off, we get some books on it. We get a course, we can listen to some podcasts and we dive into that. Like what is missing here? What, are, what pieces are we missing? What training are we missing here? that's causing us to not achieve the expectations we have. And you do that consistently over and over and over again. That's how you create an extraordinary life. You will win. That's the formula. So read, I would say, here's some common denominators. Read a little bit from a great book every single day. Read or listen to. On any topic. A really. great book every single day. Personal development stuff, professional development stuff. Like get in the, the best books. There's a lot of garbage books out there. But get in the best books and read from those books all the time. Read every day. Even if it's just a few minutes, do it every single day. Don't miss. Miss a meal, my friend. And most of us could afford to miss a few meals. Miss a meal, but don't ever miss great input. That's it. Mm -hmm. Then just stop. Stop consuming garbage right now. So if you, and that's both input like music or movies or just trash or junk food and soda and sugar and, and garbage. Just stop all that, right? Though that, that simplicity, right? So simple. Stop consuming junk media and stop consuming junk food. Just that's easy. That's that, that changes your training. It changes your outcomes. That'll change your life. It's so easy. Right now you might be saying it's so hard. <laughs> like it, it's because of your training. It's because you're training. <laughs> it actually is quite easy. You just say, no, I want to be a different person. I want different results. I don't, I don't do that stuff. I don't, I don't eat junk food because 
I want a body that can do whatever I want it to do to have adventures, right? So get back to the training. Oh man, this stuff is so good. This stuff is so good. Um, quick question here. What are your thoughts on toxic positivity? There's a label for everything, isn't there? It's being it, kind of definition here, being optimistic to the point of not being realistic. I would say that is extremely rare. I've only met a few people who are, who are that way. And generally they're, they're optimists. Being an optimist doesn't mean you're, you're not in touch with reality. In fact, being a true optimist is seeing things as they really are and believing in the hope that that's optimism. What, what you're describing there is kind of delusion, right? It, you're delusional if you're like, no, everything's great, it's wonderful, and, and you're not There's facing no reality. That's, that's delusional. And, and usually that the, vast, the main reason for that kind of stuff is we're, we're afraid and or we're avoiding our fears. Fear and or I think naivete. Yeah, being naive. Or naive. So I think that, yeah, it's obviously not a healthy thing, toxic positivity um, and not being realistic, but I think you can be truly optimistic even while being aware of the malice. In fact, you have to and be in the way things really are. Evil that does exist in the world, it really does. And there are legitimate challenges, obstacles, like all of that. We're not negating that at all. That, in fact, that is what brings the meaning and purpose to life. Yeah. It's because of the challenges. It's because of the obstacles. In fact, if you want to read a really great book, if you want to start someplace, the obstacle is the way is the way by Ryan Holiday, where he talks about the way to achieving what you want and the way to finding meaning and purpose in your life is by going through the obstacles, not by avoiding them or going around them, but it is actually the obstacle that develops you into the type of person who is becomes this strength. It, it, the obstacle gives you the training. Yes. And then when you face the obstacle, avoiding the obstacle doesn't help you. A lot of people think that. Let's, let's avoid it. It doesn't help. The obstacle is the way. And the obstacle helps you establish appropriate quality training that gets the results you want. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap up, you guys. Plus our little kids just came in here. Come say hi, girls. Come on, say <laughs> hi. Um, so we're gonna wrap up. Thanks for being here. Thanks everybody. You guys are awesome. Like get after this. Training matters so much. Be happy. Celebrate. Have fun. Train. Well, we're training every day, whether we know it or not, right? So level up your training. Make sure it is quality. Make every day count. The little things are training. The little tiny things are training. We're training our kids. We're training ourselves. It's just constant conditioning of how life works. These adorable little girls. We train them every single day. Wherever it or not, we're training these little kiddos. And you're training yours and you're training yourself. So level doing, that up. Sorry, I'm just adding some notes here. We're doing the Money Mastermind tonight at 5.30. We have education coaching tomorrow at 8 a.m. So Standard like time. If that's like... Standard home education, alternative education training course we have for um, parents. We do the money mastermind for people who want to start or scale or grow a business. Um, we do, I, again, I have my men's master class and, and, and tribe. We will be meeting again for this, the formula coaching next Wednesday. So make sure to put that on, on your calendar. See you okay. then. All right. Love you guys. Reach upward.